Hello everyone and welcome back to the channel. Uh, today I've got another review for you, but this time it's a solar charge controller. And it is the Bouge RV 30 amp PWM solar charge controller. They, uh, they sell these PWM charge controllers in 10 amp, 20 amp, and 30 amp. And this one runs for right around $37 right now on Amazon. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to compare it to this charge controller. This is another one I got off of Amazon, and I got this one for $13. It's also a 30 amp uh, PWM solar charge controller. So we're going to look at the differences, then we're going to take the uh, Bouge RV one outside, and we're going to hook it to a 200 watt solar panel and see how it does. So let's get started. Okay, so here's the Bouge RV 30 amp. Let's go ahead and open it up and see what we got. All right. And we have, looks like a couple of, some connectors, some more connectors for our wire that we can just, that we can just crimp right onto wire. And then a user manual. And our charge controller. Okay, this charge controller, it's uh, made out of some pretty durable plastic. On the side it says solar charge controller P2430N. Uh, it auto switches between 12 volt and 24 volt. It's auto sensing. Uh, and it has a max current of 30 amps. And it says that it's negative grounded. On the other side here is our, uh, our connections. These are the PV connections, and here are the battery connections, and then it has a USB port right here. On the back, it has a, um, a nice big metal heat sink. And if you compare that to the $13 charge controller, look at the, the size. I mean, it's a, it's a little bit bigger in every dimension than this super cheap solar charge controller. It looks like the, the wire connections, they're a lot beefier. One thing I do notice about this, about this uh, charge controller, it does not have a, uh, a load input or a load output. It only has USB. And this charge controller has a load output and it, uh, it has two USB ports. And then it has a couple of buttons here and that's about it. Pretty simple design. Let's go ahead and connect all this up to a battery. All right, it looks like when you first get this charge controller, these uh, these connections are all the way closed. So you'll need to loosen all of them. And I'm just using a flathead screwdriver, but it looks like you can use a Phillips as well. And make sure and pull on your connections. Make sure, make sure they're nice and tight. It looks like when we first turned it on, it's set for gel. Long press this for two seconds, and now it's blinking. And we're going to want to put it on LFP for lithium iron phosphate. So here is all the screens that it has. This is a uh, this is like your main screen. So it switches between the current voltage of the battery and how many amps are being brought in from your solar panels. And then we'll go ahead and select this and this shows the type of battery. And battery number five is lithium iron phosphate. Uh, it shows your battery type right here, 12 volts. Uh, this is what the maximum charge of your battery is going to be, so 14.6. And this is the temperature of the internal components of this unit. So it's not the temperature of your battery, it's the temperature of your controller. Uh, this is showing how many uh, volts are coming in from your solar panel. This is your error code, so E00 means that there are no errors. And then it goes back to your main menu. And this menu shows it goes between the voltage of your battery and your solar panels. 
it shows that your battery is at 12 volts. Uh, it shows a solar panel and it has a little moon right next to it. So that means that there is no electricity coming in from the solar panels. Uh, yeah, it shows your battery and then it also shows a little light bulb. I'm guessing something will probably show up when we connect something to the USB port. So let's test the USB port and make sure that it works. And it looks like by default the USB port is turned off. Unless I switched it off on accident. But it says if you long press this, it will turn on the USB. There we go. And we're getting 4.9 volts at about 1 amp. So it's just your standard USB port. Not fast charging or anything like that. Alright, I just wanted to give you a, uh, a little comparison between a $37 charge controller that's a PWM and a $13 charge controller that is also a PWM. Uh, this, is, it feels like a plastic toy, has very small uh, connections. This uh, is a lot beefier, it's easily twice as heavy, it has a nice metal heat sink in the back, uh, and a color display. Which is, which is nice. So if you ever need to look at this uh, at nighttime, you can easily see it. This has no, uh, it's just an LCD screen and this is a, a backlit LCD. Voltage wise, this one says 13.4. This one says 13.3. My multimeter says, and my multimeter says 13.33. So it looks like both of these charge controllers are fairly accurate when it comes to voltage. So we're going to go ahead and take these two charge controllers outside and we're going to compare uh, each of them to a 200 watt solar panel and see if they produce any more or less electricity. Let's go check it out. Okay, I've, uh, I've got this uh, PWM charge controller connected to a 200 watt solar panel and I know um, in full sunlight this panel, I usually get about 150 watts from an MPPT solar charge controller. So a PWM, if we can see it, I don't know if you can, but we are getting 9.3 amps. I don't know if you can, I'm trying to make it see, there we go. So it's 13.8 volts and 9.3 amps. So that's roughly 130 watts of, uh, of solar that we're getting from this solar charge controller connected to a 200 watt panel. So uh, that's relatively pretty good for a 30, you know, a, a $37 solar charge controller. Uh, the, MPP, the MPPT charge controller that I would connect to uh, is well over a hundred. Uh, I was gonna compare it to, I was gonna compare it to this one, but I could not even get this one hooked up. The, uh, the connectors kept falling off. Uh, so, I mean, don't consider buying one of these. These things are just junk. I mean, for 13 bucks, I mean, this, I feel like this thing's a fire hazard. So don't get that. If you're going to get something that you want to get something a little more, something that's a little more inexpensive, at least spend 30 or $40 for a charge controller because this, uh, this is the brains to your battery charging and you don't want this thing to fail. Okay, so here are my final thoughts about the Bouge RV PWM 30 amp charge controller. When it comes to the price, I think this is well worth the money. This right here, like I said, $14, but this really feels like a toy. The, the connections are real small. It was really hard for me to even get a 10 gauge wire in these. And the screws, I felt like I was gonna break this thing every time I tried to tighten it down to the point where uh, the wires kept coming out because I wasn't tightening, I wasn't tightening it enough in fear of breaking it. Uh, this one, the terminal connectors, they're nice and beefy. Uh, I didn't have any issue with the strength of this product. I like the display. Uh, it tells me exactly what I need to know. Um, you know, if it had the watts on there, that would be great. But, you know, for $37, 38 dollars I wasn't expecting it. Um, the color display and the backlit is a nice little bonus and I don't think that would cause any issues with uh, battery draining or anything like that. Um, 
It does come with one USB port. I don't know how often these are used. Uh, I know uh, me personally, I would probably never use this, uh, but it's nice that it does come with one. When it came to actually doing its job, uh, you know, it, it output what 130 something watts out of that 200 watt panel. For being a PWM, that was pretty good. You know, when it comes to when it comes to uh, heat dissipation, it's got a really nice big heat sink in the back that's all metal here. Uh, overall construction is really good. So I would say if you're in the market for a uh, a PWM, you know, a, a nice inexpensive charge controller, don't go don't go with something like this. Even though it's dirt cheap, you get what you pay for. This thing, you know, if you're gonna buy. If you're going to buy a battery that's over $100 or if you're going to go with lithium iron phosphate and that's, you know, that's going to be $3 or $4 or $500, don't get a $15 charge controller because this right here can destroy your battery. I would spend, I would spend a little bit more money, you know, under $40, you can get a, a pretty nice PWM charge controller uh, unless you want to go with the MPPT charge controller and then you're talking, you know, $80, $90, 100 $150. Uh, but for 30 amps and you want a PWM, uh, I would say this really is your best bet. Uh, with all that being said, thank you so much for watching this video. Uh, if you like this video, please hit that like button. Um, if you have any questions about this product, please leave them in the comment section. And uh, if you like my content, please consider subscribing. It really helps out. Thank you so much and have a great day. Bye-bye.